Oh, hey, so you can edit this out, but uh, I have weed uh-huh. delivery coming in like 10 minutes, so I'm going <laughs> to yeah. have to disappear for a second. Or yeah, you can yeah. leave it in. I don't care. So yeah, that's whatever. fine. Yeah. Get him on the podcast. I got a card. It's legal. Do you, do you, do you, have, you, have you explored different weed delivery services? Is there a specific weed delivery service that you like? Oh, my goodness, I have. We'll talk. Take another nose dive. It won't be the first. Oh yeah, brother! Welcome to the F Plus Podcast. It's a terrible place. There's terrible things, and they're read with enthusiasm. In the room tonight, we have Boots Rain Gear. Whoop! Art thou bored? Bunny bread. I do steroids. Adam Bozarth. So when this kid graduated at the top of his class in 2001, the first thing on his agenda was to move as far away from New York as possible. Enter. Anime City. From one of my favorite podcasts, I don't even own a television, it's J.W. Friedman. You're listening to the styling, profiling, limousine riding, jet flying, internet trolling, hyper inflamed, colon, son of a gun. <laughs> Woo! And Lemon. Edwards became the AWL Gold Rush champion when he cashed in on his AWL White Boy of the Month contract on a bunch of other white boys, with the exception of one oh. black guy from Michigan. How do you apply for a white boy of the month? It helps if you're white. You give all your money to Milo Yiannopoulos. That that helps a lot. Because it all to that. Kicking the lights. Kicking the lights. Kicking the lights. Hey, F+. Yeah. Hello. Oh, yeah. Hello, Lemon. Oh no! Hmm, interesting. I'm I'm looking at this group, and uh, you know, I see I see here, I see I see Bunny Bread, I I see I see J W Friedman, I I see Adam Bozarth. I see some very some very masculine voices here in the room. <laughs> right, masculine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And um, uh, yes, so, you want to. So so guys, do you think that you've all um like harnessed your testosterone? It harnessed me. Oh, that's... Yeah. Hey, what he said. <laughs> I haunted testosterone. I haunted that testosterone, Daddy. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so, am I wearing the harness or are you? Who's I this just... character? <laughs> it's me, the American Dream, Daddy. <laughs> the American Dream, Daddy. How to retire this character? Um, I want to introduce you um, to a site that's going to excite you very much. Um, it is a site um, about wrestling. Um, a, a field that uh, I believe Jay knows a little bit about. Uh, but this is uh, the e-wrestling wikia. Um, that... Electronic wrestling. Yes. Ex- so here's here's the thing about um, the e-wrestling wikia. Do you know how people say that wrestling is fake? Shut people up. don't say that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. It's predetermined, man. It, is my daddy fake? <laughs> so e-wrestling. Is daddy predetermined? E wrestling actually is fake. Um, this is a wikia um, full of uh, federations and wrestlers um, who write about themselves as though they're actually wrestling. Uh huh. And uh, fame and fortune awaits, presumably. Let me just read you a little bit from the from the homepage here. Oh, is this wrestling the hedgehog? E wrestling <laughs> The e-wrestling encyclopedia is the first fully interactive e-wrestling knowledge base. It was formed in July 2005 and is hosted by Wikia. An editable wrestling website, EWE is a collaborative attempt to document the past, present, and future of everything related to the hobby, in quotes, of e-wrestling. This includes information on the characters, federations, interfederations, and handlers, and anything which can be written about to an acceptable level. (laughs) The e-wrestling encyclopedia strives to change the face of e-wrestling and to prevent the inevitable situation where the stars of today will be forgotten in ten years' time. We plan to become an indispensable tool to all handlers and e-federation fanatics, and with your help, we might be able to do just that. God damn. Yeah, exciting, huh? Yeah. Fantastic. So let's start off uh, with a wrestler by the name of Ryan Shane. 
Uh, Boots, I think I'll let you do this one here. There's going to be a whole bunch of, like, inline CSS that doesn't quite work. You're just going to want to skip past all that. Uh, oh, you I don't... think the... I think you're, there's some really, objects in here. I want to I, I want to know about his padding right and his vertical align desperately. Are you are you trying to say that his hidden structure is not actually one of his features as a wrestler? It's 1.2 m's from padding right if you want to know. All right. Uh Yeah, we're going to talk about Ryan Shane, known as Ryan Alistair Shane. Mm-hmm. His ring name is Ace Shane. He's 6 foot 3, 225 pounds. It's from Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. His date, his date of death is death date. I mean, that's Ooh, probably, that sounds <laughs> ominous. What about his place of death, Boots? Oh, death place. Ooh. <laughs> oh, it's like parts that, unknown. That that stay away from there. Evil. Yeah, he, uh, he he resides in Manhattan and uh, Niagara Falls. Hey, Lemon, you've been to Niagara Falls. Isn't that a lovely town? It sure <laughs> um, exists. Barely. <laughs> It exists in our hearts. Um, anyway, he's handled by Shane Peltier. Okay. Um, and his trainer, who is his trainer? Oh, his trainer? His yeah. trainer is Axel St. James. Oh, damn. <laughs> A uh, true legend of the biz. Yeah, he debuted uh, April 28th, 2009, and he retired. Retired. Uh, well, yeah, so tell me a little bit about it, Ryan, please. Sure. Uh, Ryan Alistair Shane, born March 2nd, 1986, is a Canadian professional wrestler currently signed to Empire Wrestling Association, EWA, as well as known for his time in the now-defunct Combat Zone Wrestling. Uh, is Combat Zone Wrestling the one? Combat Zone Wrestling That's, that's, that's the real one with all of the blood, right? It, that is a real wrestling promotion, yeah, and they're known for like people hitting each other with like barbed wire covered objects and things. Yeah, there's like a that. there's a there's a Vice documentary that's uh, hosted by uh, uh, Damian Abraham from Fucked Up uh, about that, and it's uh, unpleasant. I like to call it wrestling for really really uh, aggressive people that I don't want to be around. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Anyway, is known under his old, old alias of Ace Shane. Good. While only Just being in the sport of professional the wrestling for a little over two years, Ryan has made significant impact on his craft. The cause of five early retirements, Ryan has proven <laughs> time and time again that he is all business and craves competition. Uh, but is really bad at retiring. That's that's <laughs> that's not that's not great. I don't think you're I don't think you're an asset to the league if you're like handicapping people. <laughs> that seems like a uh, fiduciary burden that you are. Yeah, making them pay for early retirement years that they <laughs> exactly. wouldn't have had to otherwise. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan is a strict follower of the straight edge lifestyle. Yay. Jesus cool. Christ. Yay. <laughs> Cool. Which he incorporates into his wrestling promotional videos and theme. Cool. X on my hands. I'll take the oath. Chokehold. No. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. See, no. Positive CM growth. Punk. No. CM Punk already did this in real life anyway. <laughs> I truly believe it is best way to live. And that's because he is a follower. He is better than you. Fuck. Yep. Okay, deal. That's fine. Great. Okay, so you got some early life. Uh, you've got some uh, professional uh, wrestling. You want to talk about a little bit about where you were in the Supreme Wrestling League. That's fine. But I want to know about your internet championship run, please. Yeah, everyone wants to know about that. Oh, mm-hmm. Jesus. No. Okay, sorry. Uh, donning the nickname The Cult of Personality, Ryan Fuck. Shane. Fuck. Oh, I hate that song so much. <laughs> well, guess guess what CM Punk's theme song was. <laughs> okay. Fish. Oh. So anyway, Toxic by Britney Spears. Uh, it was called <laughs> Cult of Too Personality. Can't come down <laughs> with the taste of my lips, yo. Okay. Um, <laughs> Ryan Shane set on a challenge to then SW Internet Champion, the cocky Canadian Gage Padula, on his show <laughs> This Is Your Life. After claiming two victories in a row over the champion, Ryan's ego reached an all time high. Creating a okay. South Park replica of his opponent and dropping several Canadian <laughs> stereotype comments. Oh, oh shit! Oh, dear everyone! Wow, what year was this? <laughs> mm, at the end of episode, and at episode of SW Thursday Night Thunder, Ryan claimed the internet title after a countout victory, a kick leaving Gage unconscious outside the ring. The next week, Ryan faced off with the internet sensation Matt Starr. In a oh, yeah. bloody war, Ryan emerged victorious through the, a, a Dairy Queen. 
<laughs> our disqualifier. <laughs> As Matt left him destroyed thanks to a few chair shots. Thanks, the, thanks chair shots. Chair shots. The blood rush snapped something inside Ryan, making him his will even stronger. Out to prove he was the greasiest internet champion of all time. <laughs> the greasiest of all time. G-O-T. Wow. He's the test. greasiest professional wrestler. That is a difficult title to achieve. <laughs> no, he's the greasiest. It's like okay. having this most mullet E or something. It's just amazing. <laughs> Ryan successfully defeated the late John the Extreme Killer, and a few <laughs> weeks later, his niece... What happened to, wait, 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 what happened to John wait, Killer? Wait 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 wait, 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 wait. His name is John Killer, <laughs> yeah, but his nickname yeah. is The Extreme. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, and he's also dead. <laughs> so, who killed John Killer? <laughs> Someone oh, it super John fucking Killers. extreme. <laughs> maybe it was Ricky. Maybe it was Ricky Steamboat. So 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 Ryan Sorry. defeated John Killer. Yeah, yeah, John the Extreme Killer. And a few weeks later, his niece Katie Mayhem. <laughs> with the <laughs> Katie what? Mayhem Mayhem. <laughs> with the defeat at SW Heatwave, Ryan lost his coveted belt to Katie Mayhem in the rematch. After a oh, two by four no. he had lit on fire was reversed against him. Ouch. <laughs> what the fuck? I like that the two by four turned on him. Yeah. <laughs> Not this time, pal. I've been taking money from Katie Mayhem. <laughs> While he was defeated, the numbers proved that Ryan had the most successful title defenses out of any member of the SW roster, making him in his mind, there's no actual punctuation here, the most successful internet champion ever. That's nice, honey. I'm glad that you believe it. I'm glad that you think that. Well, that's great. I mean, I you know, I loved I loved hearing about your wrestling career. I thought that was you know very helpful and uh, informative. And that's why uh, I think I'm I think I'm done hearing about your wrestling. Tell me about your out of wrestling uh, life. Oh sure, uh, out of wrestling, Brian is a world traveled athlete competing in Japan, Canada, England. Mexico, Germany, Australia, and currently the the United States of America. Okay, so is he a uh, is Ryan a uh, sports fan? Is he a is he a sports fan? Is Ryan is Ryan a sports fan? Ryan, ironically, is not a sports fan, but oh. has admitted to watching a bit of American <laughs> football and mixed martial arts at times, though never was hooked. He is a student hmm. of his craft, though. Watching as much wrestling as he possibly can. Great, awesome, cool. So wrestling, not a sport, a craft. <laughs> a craft, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. A craft like, that he has mastered. Like, like, yeah, like, like gimp bracelets. Yeah, and furniture <laughs> upholstery. Yeah. Pottery, whatever. Uh, keep going, keep going. I want to learn more about him. Okay, Ryan is an advocate of tattoos and quite a fan <laughs> of the art. <laughs> Ooh, it's time to stand up for tattoos. <laughs> Enough is enough. <laughs> Would Ryan like a blowjob? <laughs> <laughs> Every tattoo he has ever done has been from a different shop by a different artist, and each has a different meaning behind it, which Ryan <laughs> has brought up that's on That's all tattoos! <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, they're all diff- they're, but they're all the same design. <laughs> <laughs> While his arms are completely covered, he has mm. yet to confirm that he will stop getting tattoos. That's not that sentence. Uh, my body back. don't exist. I'm just arms and uh, this mouth is talking. <laughs> um, it has been said that Ryan has strong anti-capitalism thoughts oh, uh-huh. going on thoughts. in promotional videos, as well as a few of his very rare interviews. That it is a monster that will never be oh, satisfied. Jesus Christ! He has boycotted all mainstream bands. All the mainstream oh. bands. <laughs> I oh, know no, I know screen. nothing I know nothing about modern professional wrestling but I know that this is a carbon copy of CM Punk. <laughs> yeah, no, this is infuriating and I'm really just trying not to just keep jumping in but yeah, this is this is CM Punk with a different unless name. This, it's unless so CM horrible. Punk stole it from this guy. Oh, yeah, good, good point. Oh, good point. yeah, tables tell, have been turned. Hasn't tell it tell capitalism? Me, I'm, I'm I've got one a question more. here. <laughs> no, before yeah. we continue, I've got a question here because yeah. it keeps this uh, this this page is fucking enormous. But it yep. keeps bringing up the indie scene. But indie is spelled I N D Y, so I'm assuming this is the Indianapolis scene. Indianapolis, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. We're small, but we're passionate. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, Viva la Shane! And then uh, that last that last paragraph there on his out of wrestling life, please. Uh, yeah. While it does not fit his attitude, Ryan is an avid gamer and comic book reader. Ding! Oh. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> He has even gone so far as to mention them on screen, from his various comic hero or villain logos on his clothing, to even playing various games and promotional work. Holy shit, buddy! A man in his 20s that plays video (laughs) games? No way! Yo! Oh my god! All these pages are white because you flipped the script! I thought it was because we came all over them. (laughs) All right, uh, so that's well, we uh, that, so oh, that's right. uh, that's <laughs> like Ryan. mattresses. That's Ryan yeah, yeah. Shane. <laughs> and uh, can uh, can I say one more thing here yeah, about please. him though? That's great. Is yep. there's a list of his theme songs, <laughs> and yeah. one of them is called Three Question Marks by parentheses Four Question Marks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's that's chick chick chick's rival band. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah. Chick 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 and question mark and the Mysterians got together. It's, it's their less yeah, their yeah, less yeah, confident yeah. side project. Yeah, they're called. Yeah. They're called, uh, uh, they're called huh, huh, huh. Uh-huh. Um. Uh, yeah. So I like that you uh, have have like uh, achingly cataloged like every like wrestling attire that you've worn. That's helpful. Um. But we're gonna move on. Because uh, we can't we can't just stick here on Ryan, so we're gonna move on to Sean Cobbler. Sean Cobbler, Jay, um, tell me a little bit about Sean Cobbler. Mm-hmm. And 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 I know that this is an audio podcast, this isn't a visual podcast, an audio podcast. But can you t- can you try to describe what Sean Cobbler <laughs> looks like? Um, he looks like, yes. he looks like nobody I've ever seen. No, I mean he's a very unique looking fellow. He's right. he's blonde. He has kind of like a uh, a button nose. He's dressed kind of urban. He sure. has a hat. It says shady on it. Mm, His eyebrows are shady. really dark. Would you describe the hat as thick or slim? Uh, he's definitely slim. His hat says shady. He's pointing. What's, uh, is there a stain on his sweater? There is, and it may be from pasta. Maybe from pasta mania. I'm not sure. <laughs> what you gonna do when pasta mania ruins wild on you? But yeah, so he's he is uh, he's Eminem the rapper, right. and uh, I'm looking here at like the little header on his page, and I think it says, "Hang on one second, five years later, and you're still my bitch." <laughs> That's his catchphrase. Wow. I had to lean in Happy really close because it's hard to see. <laughs> All right, I seriously uh, hope that's because yeah. it's from like his rap album because this dude definitely has multiple rap albums. Absolutely. I love it when rappers make albums. Wait, no. I'm going to have some more gin. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, good joke telling, Lemon. I love when rappers make albums. <laughs> All right, so uh, so tell me, tell me about uh, Sean Cabal, Sean Cabalar. Um, well, he's the perfect vision. Born Sean Michael Cabalar, seventeen March nineteen eighty, Manhattan, New York, USA. Twenty eight years ago, an icon was born. A young baby by the name of Sean Cabalar was born, <laughs> who no one would have ever thought would become one of today's biggest celebrities. Growing up young, Sean always liked to get into trouble and provoke fights at school. Mm. I guess you can say he was your casual troublemaker as a kid who always thrived for a little attention. Mm-hmm. Growing up in Manhattan, New York. Oh, okay, that one. Okay, yeah. Wasn't as rough as anyone would think. Yes, Many- Manhattan. Yeah, mm-hmm. land of the Crips. <laughs> Many people think of New York City as the most dangerous city in the United States, but there's no actual reason for people to think of it that way. However, nope. that is the no, point. No, Sex in the City deployed. I mean, it's just wow. It God, I, I remember. I remember that time that I that I like looked out the window and I realized I was right next to the M and M store, and I was like, "Oh shit, roll up the windows." Yeah. No. One yeah. time, I thought I saw girls filming in my neighborhood, and I had to go home. And- <laughs> Well, call well, my mom and tell her I loved her. Here's the deal, right? Like, a lot of shit goes on that's pretty boring, but yep. things really start to change around ninth grade. Um, Sean oh, decides he doesn't want people around them to be buddy buddies with him, but to fight them. And as crazy and unbelievable as it sounds, uh, Sean as used... Unbelievable? Unbele- oh, oh, unbelievable as it sounds, Sean used to beat up his friends for the fun of it. Ever oh. since he was a kid... Sean always thrived for violence and gained some sort of sick pleasure of hurting someone. Oh my god, that sounds amazing. 
I, I gotta stop sucking Ryan Shane's cock so I can suck Sean's cock. Hey, well, I just noticed. Uh, I just noticed that Sean Calabar is six foot tall and two hundred and sixteen pounds. Beefcake. <laughs> Which, you know, Eminem. <laughs> He, uh, Sean, Sean Cavalar hit the wrestling world of professional at the age of 21. However, <laughs> that's when he went professional, obviously. <laughs> what? Thank you. Thank you. Those are two sentences that really gave Sean Calabar, head, get hit with head <laughs> in the head. Yeah. Doctors Sean, say TBI, me fight doctor. Sean began wrestling, ma- mainly backyard wrestling, since he was about 7 teen years old. <laughs> Ever since his first match, Sean knew exactly what type of wrestler he wanted to be when he grew up. He didn't want to be no powerhouse. He didn't want to be no submissionist. But he did Ugh. want to be Ugh. a hardcore king. Yeah, Holy shit. West Manhattan, born and raised. <laughs> <laughs> hardcore king of Bel Air. Sean lost most of his friends due to being such a sick individual. No yeah, body. Not an asshole. No body really want to be friends themselves. With someone who might nail you with a baseball bat for the hell of it while you're eating breakfast. So I guess you can't blame them for staying away from him. After all, would you be friends with someone as unpredictable? No. Didn't think so. You know, I, I, I wouldn't. I don't like getting hit with baseball bat while I'm eating my cereal. Well, Did I challenge your yeah. preconceptions about mindless violence? <laughs> I, I suppose in a way. Yeah, yeah I just blow your mind while you're eating waffles. <laughs> uh tell me tell me about uh tell me about uh uh his entrance would you oh yeah yeah this is good stuff so if okay. you've never seen <laughs> if you've never seen sean cavaller cavalar make his way to the ring I shit happens oh mm. okay Lights go to pitch black as gray lights begin flickering in the arena. Suddenly, the way I am blasts throughout the arena as the lights continue flickering. Sean then walks out from behind the curtains with a hoodie covering his head. He then begins to walk down the ramp, making his way to the ring, taunting the crowd around him. (laughs) Sean then walks over to the steel steps nearest to him, then walks to the middle of the ring apron. He then stays still as he looks around, then gets in the ring through the middle (laughs) rope. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, it's his and patented w- looking around move. Damn. He's he walks man right, look, man. He walks right near a turnbuckle. Then he turns around and just leans back on it as he patiently waits for his opponent to come out. <laughs> oh. Wait, what if he's announced second though? <laughs> well, doesn't matter. Doesn't that's matter. A problem. He always comes first and <laughs> second. Then he's waiting a fucking long time. <laughs> yeah, when's your next match? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i loved you sean you were very interesting but uh but we can but, but but we need to move on to uh joey joey harris uh joey harris's logo is the words joey harris but in the metallica font so <laughs> i'm excited for that and if you're wondering hey how can you do s in the metallica font not very well <laughs> It's kind of a typographic <laughs> challenge to turn S into the Metallica font. I've, anyway, I've, 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 got, I've got to say, just to, as a as like a really quick aside, uh, looking yeah. at this this page, it's f- kind of fun being on Wikia uh, yeah. because the sort of clickbait uh, <laughs> articles you get are like Supernatural's biggest plot holes. <laughs> New Pokemon Go coming December twelfth. <laughs> what the Arrowverse crossover ratings tell us. Anyway, Mr. Adam Bozarth, if you will tell me about Joey Harris, please. Yeah, one second. <clears throat> oh. Just had, had to run out and come back in to do this. Yeah, no, no, no. He he looked to the left end of the right, though, and taunted all his opponents. Uh, I have to oh, call, no. I have to, I have oh, to make no. my entrance. Oh, of course. I have to make my podcast in. Yeah, jump through the middle ropes or whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Joey Harris was raised in Seattle, Washington with his two parents. Whoa, so he, a he nuclear family. Raised, Holy shit. Shit, I'm all mad at that. Actually, nuclear he was family is one of his with moves. his parents. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't raised by his parents. He was raised with his parents. <laughs> Early in his life, his parents were taken from him in a homicide after which Joey <laughs> no, fled. No, no, no. That's Having not what it suffered. says. 
Shush, having suffered serious mental distress as a result of the trauma- traumatizing event. Details of Joey's early life are foggy. However, it has been stated that he enjoyed the grunge music scene, oh, listening to bands such as Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots, and Alice in Chains. Also well documented is his hatred of Hulk Hogan. Yay! <laughs> documented by whom? <laughs> Peter Thiel. And disregard for rules and regulations of authority. These days, Joey has developed a taste in a broader variety of music, though he is very fond of the metalcore genre. His favorite band is Killswitch Engage. Wow, yeah, you've certainly moved on from Alice in Chains. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Congratulations, here's shittier Alice in Chains. (laughs) On the surface, Joey has is a fun-loving, anti-authority prankster who will go out of his way to give hell to anybody who tries to order him around or control his life. He is very individualistic with his opinions and often believes he is right. When others attempt to persuade him with different opinions or beliefs, Joey also believes that nothing in the world is black and white. There are gray areas in life that can't be explained. He believes neither good nor evil truly exist, only Uh, perspective. It is by this reasoning that Joey justifies his unorthodox methodology in completing his tasks by any means possible. And how is this communicated via wrestling? <laughs> okay, because he's Raven. No, it's just finishing his shift so, at the car wash. So. Once again, they did this in real life, and the way it's communicated is you wear a flannel shirt and cut-off shorts and, like, a Dinosaur <laughs> Jr. t-shirt, and no. you sulk a lot. I'm pretty sure it's all written on Frisbees that he th- throws in the crowd. <laughs> that would be better. Just FYI, my references are all from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I remember the first time that I saw the wrestler Raven and I was like, "Oh my god, it's a wrestler in jean shorts?" And that's his thing. Yep. He wore jorts. He was Generation X, man. Just Hell like yeah. Joey Harris. Uh, although an official diagnosis has yet to be released, it is believed by many that Joey Harris suffers from a unique form of either schizophrenia or disassociative identity disorder. This has okay. been speculated on some. Uh, this has been speculated on after some very disturbing events in which Joey became much more violent, disturbed personality. Actions recorded of this new personality include mute, muttering and conversing with himself. That's good enough for me. That's the idea. Yeah. And random outbursts of violent or inappropriate behavior. You, Pretty you uncommon like wrestling? in wrestling, where you like abuse steroids. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Whoa! That guy fucking hit that guy! Holy shit! <laughs> and he's wearing shorts! <laughs> <laughs> he's dressed inappropriately in public! <laughs> now let me tell you of my training. For the most part, Joey is self-trained in professional wrestling with help from James Downey. Harris has mm. also trained in various forms of martial arts, including Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, and Cap. In Kaiporia. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Diarrhea. Got it. In Kaiporia. In his early career. That's not how Caporia is really spelled. Kaiporia. 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 Yeah. Yeah. In his early career, Joey practiced more of a luch libre. <laughs> luch libre. A luch libre. Luch libre. It's, it's French. Luch libre. Luch libre. <laughs> Luchlieb style of wrestling, masked French wrestling, Mm -hmm. but has since utilized many different technical aspects. These days, Joey Harris practices more of a ground and submission wrestling style. Wow, excellent. (laughs) Ground and submission. Yep. Uh, His uh, his slogan, Joey Harris' slogan is, uh, this is the year where hope fails you. Uh, An entire year, huh? (laughs) This is the year. Hey, uh, hey, Lemon. These this is the pages one. Pages are so fucking long. <laughs> yeah, I know. Hey, Lemon. <laughs> yeah, what's up? Who gave us this doc? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, this document was given to us by Montreth, and in fact, her first one in a little while. Isn't that right? Uh, 
uh, yeah, no, Montreth uh, was very excited about this document, uh, was uh, texting me a lot while she was compiling this document, uh, and then gave it to me, and then I went, oh, shit, well, I can't use this until we have Jay on the show again. <laughs> well, let me tell you, Montreth, thanks a lot for putting together this document, because I dig it the most. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just, I just like that. I've like, I, I've noticed how angry this document is making you. <laughs> Everything is just such an obvious ripoff. I'm seething over here. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, by the way, uh, Adam, uh, what wrestler did you just find right now? Uh, his name is Rated R Shaman of Sexy. <laughs> so good, James uh, Cobain. James AKA. Cobain. <laughs> A.K.A. Right. the Rated R Shaman of Sexy. But he has some other names, isn't that right? <laughs> yes, Saint Anger, R.R.S., or the artist formerly known as the Rated R Shaman of Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> That's after he left left the uh, 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 Independent Wrestling Federation and uh, didn't have the rights to his own name anymore. <laughs> it's when he wrote slavery on his chest in a yeah, lipstick ring. Right? Yeah. Those were some of his best matches, for sure. Oh, my God. I like those assless chaps he'd wear everywhere. I don't know uh, how the fuck you find anything on this site. Uh, it's, it's, it's Wikia. You know, you, you can take a yeah. correspondence course. A couple weeks, <laughs> it's fine. Uh, and by the way, the rated R Shaman of Sexy's trainer is Mr. D D D D. That's all. <laughs> I, like, I like the photos in this, because he started off... What wrestler did he start off as, Jay? Uh, it looks like it's Edge in okay. the uh, the original photo here, right. or it could so be that, John Morrison. It's hard to tell, but yeah, I think it's Edge. So then, at some point, like he put panties on his head when he was saying anger, and then he turned into uh, Leatherface at yep. one point. <laughs> yeah, he did. Oh yeah, it's it's definitely Edge <laughs> because uh, one one of Edge's nicknames was the Rated R Superstar. So there oh, you go. Good, good. Well, th- well, that guy improved on his thing. So. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, Bunny Bread. No. I think we need a female presence in this podcast, finally. Oh, so, will you okay. tell me about Syria? Yes. <laughs> it's a great George now, Clooney movie Jay, that you don't know nothing about. You can't about. say that Syria is a ripoff of any other female wrestler. <laughs> no, not, not at all. <laughs> I'm 100% just going to keep my mouth shut and nod. What's uh, what's Syria's oh, real name? Her name, let me tell you about this girl named Syria, right? Mm-hmm. Jennifer Angelina Styles Odala, born June 13, oh. 1970 in Louisville, Kentucky, USA, uh-huh. Uh-huh. is an American professional wrestler, personality, valet, and professional wrestler. Better known by her ring name, Syria Styles. So she's a wrestler personality, she's a valet, and she's a wrestler. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Oh, triple, <laughs> triple threat. Yep. <laughs> yeah, sure, you can wrestle, you can personal, but can you valet? <laughs> I'm a wrestler, an assistant wrestler, and a wrestler. <laughs> She is currently signed to Attitude Wrestling Evolution, where her husband, Richard Rainier, is the president. <laughs> what the fuck? That's, That's a just... Dragon Lance name. That is a Richard. fucking Dragon Lance name. <laughs> Richard. That is, that is Richard with an apostrophe after the I. Do you think his nickname is D- Ick? I mean, yeah. he's like. His uh, photo is of uh, taxi driver. <laughs> taxi driver. Oh, good. Oh, oh God. except for later on when he's Kane. Are you talking to me? <laughs> Early career. Styles was born in Louisville, Kentucky. Syria graduated with a bachelor's degree in English. I bullshit, mm-hmm. and then worked as a junior high substitute teacher in the St. Louis. Missouri area. No, she mm-hmm. didn't. She had a strong interest in the arts, which later influenced her to train with the traveling carnival. There we go. Yeah. Becoming a professional those, fire breather those... and belly dancer. Bunny Bread, your incredulous is, is uh, ill place because for some reason you're assuming that this person is the one writing the wiki. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just one of the scholars is all. Oh, yeah. okay. This is, this is not true. This isn't some sort yeah. of Mary Sue thing. No. Oh, okay. No, the, I, I know enough about wrestling to know that the scholar was actually the same guy that threw the Frisbees. 
I grew up wicked into the arts and uh, worked my whole life and made my way through art school and and then uh, immediately decided to join a traveling carnival and uh, yeah. become a fire breather. That's a, a great career path. And then take hair, chair shots. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, tell me about the tell me about the time when Syria was in World Attitude Wrestling. That's the time that I interests me the most. I would love to tell you all about these things. Mm-hmm. Syria joined World Attitude Wrestling in late 2008, but never officially debuted due to Richard's departure. This started the basis of her Syria character, being in the Waverly Hills Sanatorium, as she was originally what? born in Louisville, Kentucky. That okay. doesn't have anything to do with the first part of the sentence, but fuck it. The as a Syria huh? character. Yeah, yeah. Okay. As a Syria character, she was born in the infamous Waverly Hill Sanatorium <laughs> to an instituted lady <laughs> who was raised <laughs> by a highly respected doctor. I love that. I love that you get to make up a backstory and then you make up a more improbable backstory later. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. makes up a wait, character. Wait, 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 she wait. Makes wait. Up her own her mother was later. Killed and exported via the hospital's world renowned death tunnel, like many others before her. <laughs> After Hi, a series stock. of unfortunate events, <laughs> this being one of the tens of thousands to take place at Waverly Hills for over 90 years, oh. the everlasting revived institution was finally shut down. The medical staff were found guilty as charged for first degree euthanasia. First degree. <laughs> <laughs> it's much worse than the third or the fourth degree. We had to charge yeah. the entire staff. That's that's <laughs> accidental <laughs> euthanasia. Even the or like, or like had to go down. E- euthanasia and self defense. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, exactly. laughs> hey, uh, we call that use the of slaughter. The was coming right at me. On over 10,000 patients since the hospital opened its doors since her birth. Syria grew up in an orphanage in Montreal. Her history Yay. well known in putting her at a disadvantage, dis, uh, yeah, disadvantage during her childhood. She ran away from the orphanage at age six, traveling with carnies most of her life and making her way through her early years by performing at carnivals at a, as a freak show attraction. Hmm. Syria stumbled upon a wrestling event held at the carnival one day and has been passionate about the sport ever since. After years of wrestling in the independent circuit, Syria has moved up a step into the big leagues of wrestling. With her surreal and precise circus-trained acrobats, her exceptionally gifted wrestling what? ability... What? What? And... Did they and fight for you? She brings in acrobats, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, of course, as one is wont to do. And with no compassion for others, Syria was billed as an unstoppable force inside of the ring. That's what it is. She has a team of acrobats and no compassion for others, so she's just like (laughs) flinging small people at her opponents. No, it's just with no compassion of others, she's billed as an unstoppable force, so they're not considering how other people might want to be billed as an unstoppable force inside the ring. Yeah. There's oh. only room for one Syria, motherfuckers. But I'm an unstoppable force, too. Uh, hey, hey, y'all, I want to tell you about Austin Stevens. Is that okay with y'all? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Austin Stevens, and, um... I was born in St. Louis Obispo in California. Um, uh, I was I was previously with Extreme Backyard Wrestling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, not a record. Right. <laughs> so was I. Um, um, so he was born Austin Kyle Brian Evershine. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. Right. Uh, Austin Stevens is an American professional wrestler currently employed by World Wrestling Headquarters. On its showdown brand, Austin Stevens was born August 6, 1990 in St. Louis Obispo, California. Um, uh, Okay, so early life. All that is known about Austin Stevens' early life is that he was born in St. Louis Obispo, California. He was raised with a sister, and he started wrestling at the tender age of two years old. That sounds about right. Yeah. What? Yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, definitely. Yeah, two. Mm-hmm. That's when most people get into it. Checks let out. Me tell you, let me tell you about his sister. <laughs> Ask anyone that knew the two. They are completely in love. So much so that when you actually find out they are blood-related brother and sister, it honestly sickens you. The two are inseparable. Oh, hey, now. Austin and Ashlyn... 
were raised together. Other than her kidnapping, the brother and sister never mm-hmm. spent a day apart, but it's clear they needed to with two O's. After finally getting his sister back in December of 2007, the feelings mm-hmm. between the brother and sister became clear, and it caused the problems of both their wrong, their careers and personal lives. But they remained together even after rumors surfaced <laughs> that Ashley was pregnant by her own brother. <laughs> <laughs> And they say it's a soap opera. (laughs) Uh, Let me tell you about Extreme Backyard Wrestling. Some would consider him to be the very best superstar that Extreme Backyard Wrestling uh, ever had. At least the owner of the company would. Christopher Reigns, in his own words, said, and I quote, Austin Stevens is the best I've ever seen. Oh, okay. (laughs) No less than Christopher Reigns. He didn't say in wrestling, though. Oh, that is good. That is good stuff. (laughs) Uh, Austin came into Extreme Backyard Wrestling at the age of 16, and he flew through the ranks like no one had ever done. And he has so easily impressed owner Christopher Reigns Stevens came to the company with his little sister, who was 15 at the time, semicolon Ashton Stevens. Together, Austin and Ashlyn took down the tag team rankings and had the longest reign in Extreme Backyard Wrestling history with the tag team titles out of any intergender team. Despite the owner turning against him and stripping him of the title every time he won it, Austin remained... <laughs> That's weird. That's a weird move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Congratulations! Nice title, Fuck you! Ha <laughs> Look over there! <laughs> Got your title, fuckface. <laughs> Gotta do what's best for business, folks. <laughs> Uh, Austin remained in the company and fought. At one time, his sister ended up involved in all of it, being kidnapped by Reigns and Mm -hmm. held hostage. When Austin finally battled off the sinister owner of Extreme Backyard Wrestling, he got his baby sister back, but that was only beginning of problems in his life and Extreme Backyard Wrestling career. He was released from the company because of serious acts of violence on more than half of the superstars in the company. Oh my goodness. Sources say that he went insane and started attacking everyone when he saw company owner Christopher Reigns sent his pregnant wife to the hospital. Steve was wait, released uh, February. What? Okay. Oh, this is this was, is this is just like was, when the Islanders stole the British Bulldogs mascot dog. No, 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 no. I'm not even going the there. New York I'm Islanders just, did that. There's there's something called the Extreme Backyard Wrestling Federation, and there's mm-hmm. a president of it. And okay. I just assumed that was like you know like a 15 year old, <laughs> like maybe you know a little bit a little bit heavy set. But now right. they're talking about his wife, right. and that means no, there's but, like a grown ass man with yeah. a wife. Who's like hiring teenagers to have yeah. fake fights in his backyard? No, no, no. He was married by Zachary Austin, Kyle Bryan, Evershine. <laughs> I just, I just Zachary. hang out in backyards while teenagers hit each other. What? Yeah, nothing sexual about it. It's very. Don't worry kind about of... my penis. Don't worry about what my penis is. Just <laughs> there's, you there's worry about real... your penis. Yeah, it's a real your penis American is all beauty thing. Thanks to you. <laughs> Uh, anyway, sorry. Yeah, so, okay, uh, all of the music that he has released was banned from the radio. <laughs> That's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, here's a heading, it's called Divorce. <laughs> no one knows why the divorce between the two happened. Wait, why did, wait, wait, him did and the his marriage sister? Yeah, Why the divorce between him and his sister? Yeah. <laughs> why did it happen? Everyone says that they seemed like their love never faded at all, comma, capital U, until the day of the divorce. The two kept it silent until the day it became final. However, Ashlyn continues to stay in Zach's house, and she has stated to friends and family that she will continue to be a mother to her two children and the best sister that she could possibly be. Sister slash wife. That's mother. creepy. What, 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 what part of that was creepy? The part where she's Aunt Mom. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> One of my moves is a tilt a whirl fourteen hundred and forty degree head scissors takedown. Damn, that's a lot of degrees. It is. I have many quotes. And my are, are most of your moves thing. named after shitty like carny rides at the four H fair? <laughs> what's your uh, What's your theme song? I got a feeling they are. Oh, my theme song is Paper Cut by Linkin Park. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. What's your uh, sick? Signature weapon? Oh, it's a kendo stick, obviously. Oh, oh, yeah. Good. It fits with everything um, else. 
I was in the movie Racer X, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> of course you were. <laughs> okay. Uh, we're going to move on from here to... Ooh, this is really terrifying. Really, really scary. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, Boots. Yes. Do you, do you think you can tell me about Blood Rain? Blood Rain. Blood Blood Rain. rain. You'll have to guess which spelling of rain that is. Uh, that would be R E I G N. Mm, very nice. Very oh, nice. cool. Oh, yeah. Okay, there it is. I found it. Uh-oh. Okay. <clears throat> Blood Rain has been one of the most controversial superstars in wrestling history. He is known for not holding anything back and is not scared to share his opinions. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> For a year, Blood Rain clearly showed a hatred for the Catholic religion. Oh, fuck. Blood Rain later decided to move on. No. Oh, okay. That that is how that works. Okay. Decided to move on not longer, letting his past control his life. His hatred was explained, and ever since then, he become one of the most dominating superstars uh, in HVW. Yeah, cool. They that was holy vacuum wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Blood Rain has held a title in almost every federation he has been in. The only one he hasn't was PWO because he only had a total of two matches there. People Powerful. with ostriches. Powerful wrestling organization. (laughs) (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Probable wrestling organization. (laughs) Presumptuous wrestling. (laughs) Blood Rain has held the WOF Alternative Championship. HVW Continental Championship, HVW Extreme Championship, HVW Uh, Tag Team Championship, and the FTWO Tag Team Championship. For the wrestling organization. Fuck the world organization. (laughs) Fuck the world organization. (laughs) Blood Rain currently holds the HVW Tag Team Championship by himself. (laughs) <laughs> and the FTWO Tag Team Championship His current theme is Releasing the Demons by Godsmack Great Boy, Godsmack should just Release a second album called uh, Music for Wrestlers to come in <laughs> <laughs> Entrance Themes The album yeah, Entrance Themes License this <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh boy, okay, I need you to tell me a, just a little tiny, tiny bit about your childhood and pre-debut, please, Blood Rain. Okay, sure, Blood Rain didn't have the glorious childhood he would have killed, sorry, liked. I'm, I'm very drunk at this point. <laughs> like any caged animal, Blood Rain's desire to escape grew stronger over time. That day uh-huh. took what seemed Mike decades to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, my name's Mike Decades! <laughs> Mike Decades is his uh, his bit of rival. Buy my mixtape is only four dollars. No, it's one of his uh, Nicki Minaj alter egos. Oh, click. Wait, did we did we, skip, <laughs> did, did we skip Blood Rain's parents' names? <laughs> what are what are Blood Rain's parents' names? Uh, a Blood Rain was the child of Sylvia and Charles Rain. <laughs> <laughs> Charles was the priest of a Catholic church in London, Ontario. Uh As you can imagine, Blood Rain's family were very religious, and the fact that their I would imagine that, yeah. (laughs) And the fact that their youngest son didn't share that faith. Yeah, I'm a priest. It's just a fucking job, okay? Oh, it wasn't. Yeah, I go to the church. I say the words. I molest the kids. Whatever. I punch the clock. (laughs) Blood Rain was forced to listen to readings of the Bible. Oh, no. An attempt to drag his interest away from Egyptian mythology and onto the god that his family told him he should worship. Huh. Okay, that's a weird choice. Uh, yeah, Blood like, Rain have escaped... Have you never heard of Satanism? I don't understand. Blood Rain escaped the church and lived on the streets for countless years. Yeah. Three. Three. Um, you couldn't count that high. Blood Rain <laughs> saw a few wrestling events at a sports bar and showed interest. <laughs> This interest was spotted by a local trainer, and he offered Blood Rain a chance to learn. 
Blood Rain oh showed God. instant potential, the ability to fight with almost any style he wanted. Oh, my God. There was a guy named Blood Rain eating chicken wings in a bar who wasn't a professional wrestler yet. <laughs> <laughs> just some dude at a Buffalo Wild Wings with a credit card that said Blood Rain on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> coming close to the end. Uh, I know that uh, Montreth really wants us to read about Titan, but before we get to there, uh, Mr. Adam Bozarth, do you think you can tell me about Angelo de la Muerte? <laughs> <laughs> Angelo. Yeah, and if you'll actually go to the page, uh, do you think you could describe what Angelo de la Muerte looks like? <laughs> if you had to describe him, how how would you describe Angelo which, de la Muerte? Which member of Jane's Addiction would you pick? <laughs> Uh, that's, no, that's not Jane's Addiction. <laughs> Wrong man, but right thank idea. You, yeah. Bruce, thank you. <laughs> You're the best. I really hope something in the personal life section talks about how he fell on black days. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Adam, if you'll tell me about Angelo de la Muerte, please. Si, si, my name is Angelo de la Muerte, a popular hey! mainstay in the international wrestling evolution, M-E-W, and L-W-A, and I-S-G-A, and his current place of work is a mecca. That's mm. M-E-C-C-A. Okay. And he... He is an extremely successful rookie out of Italy. His insanity, his multiple personalities, uh, and his complete lack of consideration of his own well-being have given him a larger superstar position in the, in the wrestling world. Uh, uh, below is what is known about him. See, uh, what, see. what is your what is your place of birth there, Angelo? Uh, my place of birth is Italy, the entire oh. <laughs> peninsula of Italy, including I'm a real Italy. Fan. Does that mean, does that include Sicily too then? Oh yes, it includes <laughs> Sicily too, the island of Sicily, yes. Uh, you were you were talking a little bit in your introduction there about Mecca, would you tell me, any? Do, can you tell me anything about Mecca? Uh see, si, let me follow the link. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> see, uh, Mecca wrestling has been... Uh... <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Mecca wrestling has recently been taken over by Shifty Concerto Lombardo, this Lombardo's moving in on my turf. <laughs> why did why did we ever trust a man named Shifty? <laughs> he, he seems stupid in a retrospect, huh? Okay, so uh, Angelo, uh, tell me a little bit about your personal life, please. To everyone's knowledge, he came to the IWA. His name was only known attribute, uh, the moniker of Angel of Death. Translated to Italian with a slight variation was all he had. Uh, through Except the for you rain... misspelled Della, but I mean, I guess... Uh, shut spell. the fuck up. Okay. No, the... <laughs> the That's weeks, the slight it? variation. Okay. <laughs> Through the weeks, his history started to unfold. The formerly of Rome, Italy, he was raised in a heavily mob-oriented oh, rich family. Yes. yes, they were mob-oriented rich family. By the time of his... <laughs> by the death of his family, he escaped that life with his inheritance, and he began mm. to chase his wrestling dreams. He was in the Norway for a while, and Germany, and the huh. U.S. and Japan. Though no record of his, though no record exists of his indie years, though his years have been trained momentarily by the Dark Prophets <laughs> before he showed up in IWA. <laughs> Aside from that, uh, his former fiance died of leukemia some time ago as well. Her <laughs> name was a Cecilia! <laughs> Cecilia, no! <laughs> he also had eight more girlfriends who died! Oh, god damn it! Eight more no, girlfriends, no! He also appears to have a multiple personalities stemming from his early years in his mob family. And his pa- three personalities are uh, ADM, Jacques, mm-hmm. and Fate. His uh, birth name and real location of birth is unknown. Every okay. single one of these wrestlers so far has had multiple personalities, by the way. <laughs> 
Well, you know, it's there's a though... shot that one of them might make him interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's traumatic brain injury does crazy things. <laughs> it's as though a life of living on the road and smashing dudes in the face in front of a cheering crowd attracts schizophrenics. <laughs> Perhaps. Uh, oh, the the Dark Prophet is uh, from Minneapolis, and he is <laughs> Glenn Danzig. <laughs> Should I tell you about the grandma incident? Oh, yes, please tell me about the grandma incident. Wait. Yes, please. Not much longer after Laughlin was at his brother's grave, Angelo was there as well. However, this time it was at night. He had a knife and a shovel with him, and though it was not televised, he began to brag about the sexual molestations that had occurred between himself and Brian's dead grandmother. Brag about, huh? Yeah, mm-hmm. he then showed her the things left of the dead woman, her body mutilated by the knife when he was finished <laughs> digging up wow. Brian's brother. He mutilated the corpse with his knife, huh? Uh, and then this after is the, the camera finished. mutilation! Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> Abandonza! After the cameras finished rolling, he reburied the bodies where they were. Blah, blah, blah. And then he said, You know the what they say? Wave. Italians mutilate with their hands. <laughs> <laughs> This sent a shock wave through IWA. Uh, immediately, the website had a comment from fans asking who uh, this Angelo De La Morta was. Uh, the, the lack of information uh, only left the fans uh, wanting more. Uh, after De La Morta yeah, won, uh, he immediately went over with the fans. <laughs> Who's wow. that grandmother mutilator? <laughs> He's amazing. I want to know more. Does Hell he yeah. have grandma? Does he have t-shirts? <laughs> I want the t-shirt that says fucking kill grandma. <laughs> Here, Nana, I got it for you. Uh, tell me about when he was losing his mind, won't you please? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, 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 Angel- Angelo de la Muerte went through a few weeks of hell during the IW break following his last victory at the last uh, IWA Uproar pay-per-view event. Uh, he drove himself into a suicidal, psychotic episode right now. His uh, former mentor has uh, returned to, to watch over his scheduled matches and uh, making sure he gets to and uh, from the medical facilities between matches. You know, uh-huh. he uh, he was in uh, kept uh, heavily sedated and restrained, like uh, you know, as other uh, <laughs> as so many professional wrestlers are, very right, heavily sedated yeah. and restrained. <laughs> Seems very uh, very good for <laughs> absolutely just as a hobby. Uh, everything was set up for the next shocking moment of his career. The mm-hmm. match of versus himself. Uh, that's a that's that's a Monty Python sketch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the end of Double Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> After throwing himself through a two of flaming tables, stop a path of umtax, he killed the ADM inside wow. of him, and now he prefers to be called uh, Jacques. Ooh. Yet uh, only yet to lose any matches. Uh, he's a uh, consistent bad mouthing uh, <laughs> current champion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kristen Carroll uh, was probably perhaps uh, the only reason he never got a shot for the world title. I spit so, on you. So there's 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 many 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 words in your uh, yeah. in your uh, bio here, but uh, Angelo. I want to. I want to ask you. Do you have any any moves at all? Do you have any sort of like signature moves or special moves or any moves that you're known for? Oh, any any I'm... special moves that are yours and yours alone? Oh, I've got to, I've got a couple. Uh, my signature signature moves. Uh, mm-hmm. Is that the, what you mean, or is the finishing move? Let well, me. Well, I'm see. just. I just want to know any sort of moves that you have. If you if you have any that you wanted to shout okay. out. Okay. Well. Uh, my finishing moves are the inevitable fate, which is uh-huh. a shooting star press, uh, uh-huh. the mortal gotcha, which is a crucifix bomb, and uh, the hand of fate, which is basically the walls of Jericho. <laughs> which How is you a, feeling? How you feeling right now, Jay? A <laughs> uh, four-figure leg lock. <laughs> at least, at least they called it out and said it was exactly what it is. <laughs> 
<laughs> and also, I like her to take my sock and put it on my hand and to put it in the man's mouth. I paint, I paint the little face. I call on him it. a, I call him a senora stocking. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Close enough. Enough. Uh, yeah, but any any sort of other moves that you have, any sort of other moves that are spe- specifically specifically yours alone. Uh yes. Uh, under uh, we got uh, other moves like the yeah. Hurricane Rana, hmm. Hurricane Ron, Can Rana, right? The Power Bomb, uh, the STF, uh, the Swanton Bomb, uh, the DDT, uh, the German Suplex, which is usually done in a series of threes. <laughs> Uh, because okay. it's the funny, the funniest wrestling move, <laughs> right, I guess. Exactly. Uh, the rule of German suplex. <laughs> it, it is pretty hilarious when it happens in threes. <laughs> the vertical suplex, the flying closer line, uh, the moon assault. Uh, see, see, you got to make sure you know that I can do these moves uh, and uh, which buttons to press in the <laughs> in the video game. I like that one of your special moves is slap. <laughs> Yep, and a baseball slide, hey, what's and a, a lion salt, or whatever that is. Um, of, of your entrance themes, uh, one of them is bold, but I don't care about that one. What's their second last one? Oh, uh, well, that would be one of my favorite songs while I was in uh, the mech, uh, and that would be Dead Body Man by the Insane Clown Posse. Yay! Yeah. Whoop, whoop! Dead, ding, 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 <laughs> but doctor I am violent J. <laughs> Mr Mr uh Mr JW Freeman, I want to know a little bit about Titan. Oh uh, no, Titan. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh Montreth, uh, of all of these people, Montreth was the most excited about Titan. So so can we learn about Titan? I know that he's uh he was uh from Montreal and in the extreme championship wrestling. Um okay, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean uh mm-hmm. Let's see his professional wrestling career. There's perhaps? a lot of Canadians in here. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Lemon. I don't think you're pronouncing Titan's name right. Okay, uh, so Jay, would you tell me about Titan? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> yep. Titan was born in Montreal. And was the son <laughs> of Josiane and was, Jake was, Richer, and is said to be pro- no. he was born in proclaimed- Mount Royal. <laughs> yes, he was born in Mount, Mount Royal, Royal Richer. <laughs> <laughs> he had been proclaimed as evil by the doctor who first saw him. Titan has an unusual <laughs> childhood and is said to have killed his aunt at the age of two. <laughs> yep. Okay. Whether if it you was get killed intent- by a two-year-old, Cyanara. <laughs> Excuse me, yeah, that's, but, that's on you, but really. there's an important <laughs> part about baby. this case, and it's right. however many people believe that Titan was not aware of his actions at this age, and thus should not help be responsible for her death. Titan's next victim came at the age of four when, at his birthday party, he is said to have raped one of the girls at his party Jesus almost to death Christ. before sliping, slicing her belly open and lighting her on fire from her organs dripping with gasoline at however age of four. Okay. At, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah whether or not he did no, that he's advancing pretty easy. quickly however uh, many of them he did a lot of work but hey, Brad, what's however the, what's the name of the uh, mma guy that this is a ripoff of uh, <laughs> all of them <laughs> pretty much so war machine Most of, no 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 his name no 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 war machine no <laughs> war machine didn't do this shit i'm gonna um, jump ahead a little bit because i think it's important for us to know that um uh Titan's vicious childhood led to his mother leaving him and his father only to return and become pregnant second child, which resulted in them being fleeing together and leaving Titan as an orphan at the age of six after moving from several homes. Titan's mother died shortly after the birth of her second baby. Okay. Uh, one of the one of the things that happened here it says, it says uh, it is said that he went on trial during these six years one thousand five hundred times. Wow! Oh, it does Jeez. say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's more than most. Uh, oh, and he, okay, yeah. yeah, the yeah. six years between uh, f- six and twelve. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there are a tumultuous time in a boy's life. I think we should learn a little bit about the professional wrestling career of Titan. Okay. How about this? Shortly after his 12th birthday, Titan joined a wrestling school. 
Due to his young age, Titan became the joke of the class and was picked on by the other students. The champion of the school decided to bind Titan into a fight. <laughs> Titan accepted this request and is said to have broken his neck. The trainer at the school taught Titan the basics he needed, like neck breaking of children. <laughs> <laughs> Two years later, Titan snapped the spine of his trainer by executing a power bomb into a DDT. The trainer died on impact to the ground, and Titan later nicknamed was he that move. <laughs> yeah, he was. And Titan later nicknamed that move the Final Exit, which became his finisher. Oh, I don't think you can nice. name that a move if it's just a murder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my special finisher is that I murder guys. Yeah, my special finisher is the gun. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, mm-hmm. after uh, after all that happened, Titan then spent three years on the Japanese wrestling circuit before moving to America in a $1 million deal for him to enter a wrestling tournament with 1,024 men. Jesus <laughs> is Christ. he fleeing extradition? Or? I guess so. Titan won his first nine matches and is rumored to have killed eight of his opponents because so. this is Kumate. <laughs> Nobody I was guess. watching those matches, I guess. I got one more short thing to say here. Yeah, what's and that? It, it's just that the uh, one opponent who didn't die was a wrestler named Steam, who <laughs> later turned out to be Titan's half-brother. <laughs> oh, it's, the, it's the racer X of this situation. He is. <laughs> and both both of them have all caps names, so I'm surprised they didn't figure it out sooner. <laughs> <laughs> then there was a second cousin named NASA. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh man, there's an entire uh this document once again uh put together by Montreth. Um there's an entire section of this document we haven't gotten to uh because well there was so much other fun to have Wait, but, uh, sorry sorry um, one, one, yeah. one last thing about titan because we need, yeah, we yeah. need the, like the end of the story uh just like the last uh two sentence paragraph before banner and just 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 so you know that the banner for titan says titan and that's uh garen fucking damn t and then close parentheses <laughs> <laughs> Titan then went missing, and it was assuming he was kidnapped. However, he returned and once again ruled XCW before no. the Federation closed. No, no I, was, I was just, I was just around. It's okay, cool. I... <laughs> uh, he's been kidnapped. Nope, nope, I'm actually in charge of the company. It was just in the basement playing Nintendo. Uh, before we conclude, uh, there is a bonus section here that Montreth has included in the document, and it is from the New Next Level Wrestling Forums, uh, 2nlw.proboards.com, uh, and this is a, uh, a wrestler intro. Shoot it down the wild surprise, bang, bang, <laughs> I am the warrior, I am the warrior! Warrior Warrior appears at the top of the ramps in a tuxedo as he strolls out. He shakes his fist at the audience, who are all expressing their distaste at his appearance. <laughs> no matter! He is the warrior, and he does not care what people think! He strolls out of the ring and points to the ceiling. A microphone lowers! He couldn't fight when the, he couldn't fit when it's something about tights. He clasps the mic and raises his hand for silence. The crowd is hostile. The master of domination and chaos has arrived and destroyed the champion standard bear like my Gilgamesh quad giant humbob amongst the cedars of Babylon so his courage lifted the upper center of me and squeezed the life from his frail form. Oh, shit. <laughs> the K-I-D. Jet startup. K-I-D. K-I-D. Warrior smiles wickedly. Nobody is left to challenge the crazy rules supreme. <laughs> he has broken down all semblance of authority. The rest of the inferior wrestlers like Restless Jack will try to ignore crazy and hope he will spare them a crazy spares no man. 
or woman. Now the crowd chants for Reckless Jack. The crowd demands Reckless Jack. Yes! Reckless Jack! Yes! Call for Reckless Jack, you frickle whores! Bring him forth so that Crage may rip his flaccid arms and devour them with his mighty jaw. What did Crage do to Bally, he will do to Jackie and everyone else who dares oppose him. Nobody here is able to stop the master of anarchy! Warrior, warrior raises his hands. Four kettle drums are wheeled out to the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so behind each drum is a man dressed in tuxedo. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> each is holding a pan and drumstick. They flake the top of the ramp to on each side. Warrior, warrior clears his throat and points to the top of the ramp. Behold! <laughs> but he does not get any farther than that win. End of post. End of post. <laughs> and then the match begins. <laughs> Crage. <laughs> I <have> chaos. Crage. <laughs> Uh, this is what well, this is one more post from new next level wrestling uh, of a very exciting moment that happened uh, called still in the back of my mind. The scene opens up backstage with two NLW announcer Roxy Redhead. The European chick stands with a red shirt, tight stonewash jeans and red shoes. Her hair is lowered down, and she makes a kissing gesture at Dave the cameraman before he looks in. Just then, just then, he speaks. All right, blokes and blokets, tonight we've, I've got a special treat for you. The 2NLW Scion champion himself is about to be interviewed. Here is Carl the Baby Baller. <laughs> his name his name is the baby baller the no, baby no, baller his, so his it's carl baller, baller the baby name the baby carl oh, the baby baller. Oh, there's nothing wrong with that yeah. no no okay nobody's getting arrested here here is carl the baby baller i mean <laughs> the kid i think crimity whatever the bloody hell his name is h apostrophe is Bloody now his his name is. <laughs> the camera turns over to Carl Baller, and as soon as the fans get a glimpse of him, a large pop occurs. Baller is wearing a Phillies baseball cap, a mm. tight white wife beater, baggy cargo pants, and matching sneakers. Matching what? Baggy the sneakers. Two- <laughs> baggy cargo sneakers. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> I got so much weed in my sneakers, bro. (laughs) Uh, The 2NLW Scion Championship is wrapped around his waist as he snarls at the camera. Mangy mutt, all righty, let's get down to business. Carl Baller, how do you feel right now being the Scion Champion? She points the microphone to his lips. (sighs) Strange. (laughs) No words come out of Baller's plural mouth. It is like he is thinking of something. Maybe that is why he is snarling at the camera. Um, well, whatever. Your match with... Oh, God. Oh, God. Your match with Silly is considered to be one of the greatest one-on-one encounters in 2NLW history. Uh, At Entropy. What? What? Six star match, easy in the Wrestling Observer. <laughs> At Entropy, a couple days ago, you defended your two NLW Scion title against Zilly, yep. that almost yep. went to the full sixty minutes to a draw until you took him out with your headshot from the top rope. What made you think of that? What made you think about hitting him? <laughs> What made you think about trying to end your hour-long wrestling match? (laughs) Knock, knock. What the hell are you doing, Carl Baller? It is an interview. You're supposed to talk. Anyway, 
KB still looks at the camera, fire in his eyes. You would think he is happy that he just defeated one of the greatest two NLW superstars that the company has ever had. He still does not talk for some odd reason. Asshole, I bet that if Furious G... Carl Baller snatches the microphone out of her hand and posts it up against the near... And posts her up against the nearby wall. Cool. He's got some... Yeah, just tape. He puts... He pulls the microphone... He pulls the microphone to his lips angrily and breathes very heavy. The 2NLW Scion title rubs against her stomach as KB looks at her angrily. A Welsh a Welsh security guard. <laughs> Good luck, bunny bread. A, a Welsh security guard happens to walk by and spots what happens. Pull he dashes. Lady, dude. What's your problem, me? Eh? Stop like like a weak little boy. What's actually that to me? Hey, 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 the last hey. four words just form a shadow over Carl Baller. Someone familiar used that on him a couple times, and KB was pissed about it. He drops the young interviewer and charges at the security guard. He tackles the man and starts swinging wildly. Roxy screams and runs off screaming for help. About 30 seconds later, KB gets off a now bloody guard who looks to be unconscious. Uh, Our heavy I, I, breathing I, champion. What does, what does he look to be? Oh, he looks to be unconscious. Unconscious. Unconsui. Unconsui, yes. yes. <laughs> Our heavily breathing champion looks at his damage and talks. <sighs> He'll pay. That man will pay. KB turns the corner and walks off, and the scene fades to black. Image not found. Oh, okay. <laughs> the end. <laughs> oh, twist ending. Okay. Carl Baller here has uh, a full ten stars from this forum. <laughs> <coughs> so, uh, F plus. What did we learn from all of this? I hate wrestling. Yep. <laughs> I really like wrestling, but wrestling fans you. are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I was, I was, uh, uh, when I was, when I was, uh, in San Francisco, uh, uh, a while back, uh, I was having a chat with Kumquas up and Kumquas up is a, he's a, he's a motorcycle enthusiast and, and he enjoys motorcycles and therefore he talks to other motorcyclists and he says that the difficult thing with it is that when you talk to other motorcycle people, you have to spend about 10 minutes figuring out if that guy's an asshole first. <laughs> Is is there a similar problem with meeting other wrestling fans? There is, yeah, and yep. uh, pretty okay. much the rule is it never talk to wrestling, or sorry, never talk about wrestling to anyone on the internet, and you're fine. <laughs> okay, <laughs> how's that going? I've seen your Twitter feed. <laughs> uh, I, I, hey, I stopped Twitter about uh, two months ago, and there's okay. a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that Vegeta is the a former competitor in the Ultimate Crossover Tournament Fighting League. Ooh, excellent. yeah! I, I learned earlier that Sephiroth beat Naruto. So and Vegeta good. was also the president of the UCTF from 1999 <laughs> to 2005. I guess. Also, there's, a, there's at least 20 wrestlers in here named Sonic. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Yes, wrestling the hedgehog. I thought. Oh, oh the look up, uh, look up Steve Austin the Hedgehog if you ever want to want to have some fun. Yeah. fun. I thought I knew fun. every uh, shitty uh, font that existed in the world, but uh, this this website has introduced me some new ones. <laughs> Uh, the website is always thefpl dot us. Uh, our forum is Ball Pit, and uh, we've got some other sites you can visit. So you should do that. Maybe buy some stickers. Uh, and uh, do you even lift bros? Bye bye.
JW Freeman, would you like to read about another wrestler? Um, I would. You would. You would. Is there is there a wrestler that you have in mind? Could we talk about Cypher? <laughs> Wait. Now, by Cypher, do you mean Dan Cypher Kilburn? <laughs> <laughs> I think that's exactly who I mean. Ugh. <sighs> Dan was born on July 1st, 1986, parents to James and Marion Kilburn. Wait, so he was born and was immediately parents to two yeah, people. Ouch. His parents were verbally abusive to him almost his entire Aww. life, and later, that verbal abuse soon turned into physical. His parents always were angered with him because he did not wish to take up the family business of dentistry when he wanted to start a business of his own. Oh, my God. Is this Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? This is Dr. Glenn Yankum, DDS. Uh, well, no, this is literally Kane. I mean, his name has Coborn. Anyway, but yeah, he, he had an interest in economics and engineering, which was a rather strange combination for a kid of his age to hold interest in. During high school, who That's he was constantly yet. teased and bullied around for his size. After his growth spurt, he was teased and bullied for being so skinny. One famous story that Cypher would talk about all the time was that the two high school bullies, Jordan McQueen, who would later take the ring name Steve McQueen. <laughs> good, good name. Very good, good name. Good, I'm slick. <laughs> One of the jocks in his school, and Jonathan Stewart, who would later take the ring name Communist John. Yeah, that's sexy the, too. Ooh, yeah. Subtle, uh, subtle, very subtle. John. Amongst the gang of four other teenagers who brutally beat Dan. Oh, at home, he feels like a tourist. They brutally beat Dan to the point of a coma. When he yeah. was when he was fifteen, due to being accident prone with medical bills piling up and their dislike for him his parents kicked him out of the house and left him homeless for four years <laughs> they died in 2003 yeah. problems during his time of being homeless fuck you dad <laughs> those problems though they forced him back a grade and he didn't graduate till the age of 19 fuck He's you homeless mate. and still going to school <laughs> yeah. Good for him, I guess. I mean, his his big uh, villains were guys from high school. They were jocks. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. guess so. He kept <laughs> kept going. They're also jocks from school. 1972. Steve McQueen. I, I like that his parents kicked him out for two reasons. The first is that he was accident prone, and the second is that they didn't like him. <laughs> well, look, look. Here's the things about Dan, though. He's tough right. as nails, but okay. there's also some trivia about him. You want to know just a few interesting things about him? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so Dan's favorite drink is grape soda, and his favorite food, <laughs> ham pizza. Oh shit! I want to guess bacon. Oh damn it! Ham pizza. Damn it! That's so cool. So cool. Great. Canadian Dan is accidentally Canadian admitted to having a crush on Sailor Venus, a character on the TV show Sailor Moon, but only once. <sighs> He's denied it ever since. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. So this is this is a badass, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, most importantly, Dan is very keen in archery and chess. Wait, I, I want to know. Yeah. It's an important yeah. thing. Yeah. Important, I want to know this about all wrestlers, but most importantly about Dan. What's his favorite dual monsters card? <laughs> um, it's good to know that Dan's favorite dual monsters card is Air Knight Parsha. Although he's never used it in an actual duel, and after he retired from the game, he kept three copies of the card as a collector's <laughs> item. Shia calls them shiny. This is the funniest fact. <laughs> well, son, they didn't have Pokemon cards, but they had dual monsters. Is that okay? Air Knight Parsha. Uh, what, does Dan have a favorite casino game? Uh, he does. It's Air Knight Partner. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's favorite casino name. Pardon me. Dan's favorite casino game is No Limit Texas Hold'em. He quit cool. Dual Monsters to play the game <laughs> as a full time hobby. Full time it hobby. Is, it is with a heavy heart that I leave. The I retire. Monsters. I must say, while I had many great times with Dual Monsters, the lack of awkward novelty sunglasses and green <laughs> visors has been a huge detriment to my enjoyment. <laughs> I feel so at home when I hear... <laughs> <laughs> uh, is, he, is, he, um, is he rich at all? Like, Dan, is, he, is Cypher, is he rich? Dan's a multi-millionaire, sure, but... Barely. 
His net worth is at two point <laughs> one million when counting his current house, company assets, etc. combined. He's never he's, dated oh, right, ever. Absolutely. He's never is- dated ever, despite yes. having an on camera relationship during his early WOF days in living with Cheyenne Akari and Sakura Hayote currently. They Please, sound kind of Asian. Dated. That really Holy shit. sounds like but a manga. You know, does, that doesn't, doesn't mean he never got a little little busy, you know? They sound like they got boobies. I cannot have a relationship due to my warrior's code. Uh, what's your uh, What's your signature match there, Dan? Uh, oh, gosh. Okay, so here's <laughs> the thing about Dan. Dan's signature match is a schoolhouse brawl match, which he still uses long after his gimmick regarding high school past disappeared. Oh, he can't let go of high school, huh? He's like 33, and he still does a schoolhouse brawl match, just like when you go to see Blink-182. They're all in their late 40s, but their songs about, like, you know, like going to the mall shop after school. (laughs) (laughs) 